What's up? It is Dylan Skelly Dunn coming at you not so live from a really hot Pittsburgh today because my dad doesn't believe in air conditioning unless one of us dies from heat stroke first and I don't like shorts. Shorts and I are not pals, buddies, bros, brosifs, dudes, but just we're not friends. We're not frenemies. We are just straight up enemies. Me and shorts, I just, my pale corpse legs don't enjoy them, so I don't wear them. But to get back on the track of Rooney of this story, um, it's about camping. It's about the time that I actually went camping and how I will never really do it again, ever. Mm -mm. So, uh, me and my two friends, Beatrice and John Green. I saw there are, I don't like making up names. Mm -mm. Go camping. I would just never go camping with John Green. I would never. I would never. It would give him some weird plot to a, a book about two heterosexual people and just that'd be so boring. Okay. So, I'm going camping with him, though, apparently, right now, and I get this rickety tent from my aunt, and she swears up, down, sideways, left, right, alabu to Jesus, that this tent is a five-person tent. It's not. It's not. No. Okay? So, it, we take the half an hour to set up this rickety thing, because pool X doesn't go into pool Y, and pool X, Y, Q, Z, it's just not to be found. So, after we get this thing up, it's like a one-and-a-half-person tent. So, I don't know what a half-person is. I've never met a half-person. We are all whole in my book. But, uh, yeah, so, hmm. so I can either fit my whole self in half of John Green or my whole self in Beatrice's legs or something in this tent comfortably. So we just ignore, we're just like, wow, we don't have anywhere to sleep, but that's okay. So we just, we move on, we build a fire. Now, my friend Beatrice is like super like boy scout. I can rough it in the wild. I can survive survivor. She, kind of person. I've never seen Survivor, but I'm pretty sure she can survive it because I, I know that they're like all half naked and they get voted off the island with big fiery sticks. So she would never get voted off the island because she could kick butt. So she has this really bad idea. And I, I love bad ideas because I am full of them and that's the only kind of ideas that I have. So she, let's do the math together. She does fire plus the gasoline that I brought, just, just for fun, equals <sighs> big fiery freaking flames. As opposed, as opposed to not fiery f flames. So it's like, I'm, I'm a chill person, but this is like the most five minutes of unchillness that I will ever have. I, I'm like, my chill leaves my body and it just goes. It's like, where's Jill and chill go? I don't know. I, it's like, where's water? Where did it go? Because this is like the highest fire that I have ever seen and it's melting my face. And I'm just like, yeah, I'm gonna go use the restroom. I'm going to use the restroom. So the campsite that we're at is like our tent. I don't, you can't even call it a tent. Or like sad tent. And our, our really big fire. And then woods all around. And then maybe like five minutes up a hill. If you have extendo eyes, you could see somebody else's campsite. And then a bathroom. Now I walk up to this bathroom and it's like the size of a shed. And it looks straight out of like a jetty versus a jetty. Jetty. A Jedi. It's a Freddy vs. Jason horror movie because it's so rickety looking and, and two rickety, 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 like, shades are the only thing as a door. And there's no lights in the inside, but there's one red light on the outside. And I'm like, wow, that's good. That's I don't like this because I can see myself. That's good. Okay, better. Good. Ha ha, hello. And um, so I, I, I had changed into my pajamas because what the heck, no one's going to see me. But do you ever do this thing where you're wearing an outfit and you can be anywhere and you're like, what if I died in this outfit? What would people think of me if I died in this outfit? So I'm wearing my, my dog pajamas. My dog pajamas. It's, it's, it's pajama pants with dogs on them and I am wearing them proudly. But that's not what I want to die in. Because, you know, I want to get I love dogs tattooed across my chest. But I don't want people to know how how much I love them. Because even though I'm not ashamed, just dying in dog pajamas is really not the way that I ever pictured myself going. So, I walk into this bathroom fully expecting death. Because it's so scary. Man, it is so scary. But that's not what I find. I have three reactions as I walk into this bathroom. Because there are five chicks just laying on the ground. Just laying on the ground. And I'm talking girls, not like farm animals. Okay? My first reaction is, Ugh. Like, Ugh. You're laying on this ground. This bathroom floor. 
like this really gross bathroom floor that doesn't even have windows, okay? It's like a hole in the wall. That's the window. There's no, like, glass. It's just a hole in the wall. So anything could crawl in and lay eggs or have babies in this bathroom, and you're laying on the ground. Second is, um, what? What are you doing? What are you doing? Third is, I can't pee here because I have stage fright. So I, and I can't be like, oh, <laughs> I walked into the wrong building because it's the only building for like freaking miles. And how uncool would that be? And I also think that they've seen me in my dog pajamas now. So really we are friends. I'm friends with these two, five people laying on the ground in the bathroom in the middle of nowhere. It's the best kind of friends. So I walk, I, they don't move off the ground, so I have to like walk between them and do like some twister moves to get around them. And then I go in the stall, don't pee, wait a couple minutes, leave. I don't look back. I don't, I don't look back. I don't look back. Me and my full bladder, we don't look back. So I go back to the campsite and the, the sun is now setting. And we're, we're getting ready to just, you know, because you tell ghost stories, we're making s'mores. But I'm not allowed to call them s'mores because I don't use melted, I don't use chocolate because... So I just have like gooey graham crackers. And we're like, let's tell ghost stories. So the second that I begin to tell this ghost story that is totally, probably not real because I, I don't know any ghost stories. Someone from the camp with that you can see with your extendo eyes starts playing the flute. And I'm not talking like, Mary had a little lamb that everybody else can play. No, this is like, I just decapitated you and smeared your blood over my face and I'm playing, I'm holding your bones and we are dancing around a fire kind of music. Okay, it is scary. And it is like, cause you're in the woods, so you can't, there's no nothing. There's, it's silent, except for this really scary flute music. And I just, I, mm -mm, I, I chill is now gone from my body completely. I found it, but it's gone again. It's, it never wants to come back because what the heck? What the heck? So we didn't even know there was a campsite that way, but there was, and they were playing the same flute music. So I'm like, what kind of cult did we walk into? What kind of musical cult is this? What kind of, like, we should get a flute. I need to play Mary Had a Little Lamb so just like we can look like we are, we belong here and we don't get killed. So we, I, I, I could be a statue in that time because we are just chilling, the fire is cackling, the flute claw, the uh, flute cult is playing their tunes, and I'm just like, okay, okay, I'm gonna die in my dog pajamas. At this point, I've, I've just accepted it because, like, look, I love dogs, and now the world just is gonna know that a little more than they already do. But the flute stopped playing, and we're just like, thank you. I've, had, I've eaten too many s'mores up at this point, and um, I've been scared. So I, I, I guess I was stress eating, because you know that could have been my last meal. Chocolateless s'mores, not the way I would want to go. So it's pitch black now because you know you're in the woods and there's no lights. So um, where the fires died down, we've told really dumb ghost stories, you know, like Casper the friendly ghost and some Scooby Doo stuff that I just. Somehow memorized. Somehow. Number one fan. Anyway, so we hear some rustling. And you know, you know, you, you, of course you are, because you're surrounded by woods. So I'm just like, huh, that could, that's probably a bunny. Now, I don't know if you've ever been to Pennsylvania, but we have a lot of deer and raccoons and, you know, all those other lovely animals that come out at night. So, wait, deer come out at day, don't they? I don't know. I don't know what kind of, I don't know when deer like to party, but they're, I, they could be partying at night. That's what I'm thinking right now because, you know, I've never seen a raccoon up close up until this point. So this raccoon comes out of the woods, beady little glowing eyes, and I just know that it's a raccoon because, you know, you just know, you just, you, sometimes you have fears and they become, a, they're just, your mind supplies a picture of an animal. And there was a raccoon in my head, so it was a raccoon. And my friend, Survivor Beatrice, is getting sticks, and she's smacking them together to scare this raccoon while John Green's out, like, hiding in our tent. Because John Green fears things, apparently. I don't know. I don't really know what the actual John Green fears. Uh, good plots. Um, homosexuals. I'm just saying that because all his books are so stereotypically the same thing. Anyway, not a John Greet hate kind of video. So, this raccoon, while I'm terrified, I'm trying to look strong in these dog pajamas. 
uh, goes back into the woods and we're like, yeah, we just won. I just won against a raccoon with my bare hands. I didn't win. We didn't win. We did not win at all. So like five minutes later, as I'm eating this last s'more and Beatrice is telling me the latest story about something, we hear another Russell. We hear Russell Brand. And guess what pops out of the woods? Not one pair of beady eyes, but six! So this raccoon saw us, assessed the situation, and came back with reinforcements. So it is a war. We are at war with the coons. The coon army. The raccoon army. The racks. The coons. The raccoons. So, uh, I don't want to fight raccoons. All I want to do is prevent forest fires in this woods. So I'm just like, I'm outie. I'm, I'm so gone. I joined John Green in the tent. And uh, Beatrice is just playing with her sticks until I guess she gives up on that idea because it doesn't work. Because they know and they've evolved in the last two minutes. Uh, no longer fear sticks. Maybe the band, but I'm not, not actual sticks. So she comes in. So there's three people in this one and a half person tent and it is the most uncomfortable like five hours of my life because we are all like snuggled together sweating and you can hear the raccoons walking around and of course you don't get any cell reception so you got no Wi-Fi. Uh, we can't play any board games and we can't play card games. So we literally sit there and talk because none of us are sleeping. None of us are going to go to bed when we have the, the enemy walking around eating our food, fooding our eats, drinking our festive waters. So five hours into this really long wait, I realize that I can't hold it anymore. I have to go pee. So like the rustling has died down. The brands are gone. So I'm just like, I'm going to make a run for it. So that's what I do. I make a run for it in my dog pajamas in the dark up to the scary bathroom. I get in the bathroom. Girls are gone. I'm like, I'm going to pee. Victory. So I'm peeing and I hear a rustling. And I'm like, there's no way. It's probably like a bird at night, like two in the morning. Yeah, so I, I, uh, I get out the stall. I get out of the stall to go wash my hands. And I hear something. I freeze. I check the mirror. Can't see anything. Got my little flashlight. Raise it up to the mirror. See myself. I scare myself a little bit because, you know, no one ever looks good in the woods. And then I'm just like, oh, what could that be? So I, like, turn around, hands wet. Flashlight flashing. In the corner of the restroom are three. Three. Count on one, two, three. The six raccoons. In the restroom with me. So one, I scream so loud, bloody murder, like I could be in a horror movie because technically I was. I scream so loud. And two, I realize I have overcome my fear of peeing in front of people slash animals because I, I did. I peed in front of three raccoons. I was gonna pat myself on the back if I wasn't too busy like dying, screaming my head off. So I like drop my flashlight, you know, in, in typical horror movie fashion because I make all the mistakes. And then I run out the door, don't even, not even looking at like what could be around me. I'm just running and I fall down the hill and I tumble down the hill and it's a lot quicker than running. So I'm like, I pride myself on accidentally falling in the, like in the horror movies. And so I get back to the tent and I'm like, we gotta go, we gotta go. They have evolved, they know, they're thinking things. It's like Planet of the Apes, Planet of the Raccoons. So, of course, John Green's all about leaving, and so is Beatrice, because, you know, she's, she's tough, but she just, she, she's had enough. We've all had enough. We've all had a very long day. So, we pack up all the food that they didn't eat, which was, like, nothing. Um, we, I don't even really try, try to save the tent. I grab all the XYZ poles, and I, I put them in the back of my car, and I rev my engine, and we were going down this dirt road at the speed of, like, 150 miles an hour. Not really. That's way too quick. But, I mean, we are in Fast and Furious, so we're going, like, 60 and one of my head headlights is burnt out, so it's like one headlight, and it's so scary. And that's the, um, uh, yeah. So I, I, we get out on the highway, and we're all hungry and starving and really, really tired, but we drive the two hours home, drop them off, drive to my house. Guess what I see? Freaking raccoon in my yard. Why don't raccoons like me? Do I still wear those dog pajamas? Yes. Will I ever go camping again? No. So that's the story of how I went camping, and this is a super long video, and I apologize. But, uh, yeah, thanks for watching. 
and I hope you guys have a wonderful day. And you guys have an irrational fear of animals because I fear petting zoos more than 